Last week, something happened that fucked everybody up with Alec Baldwin shooting uh, the AD on the set in Santa Fe, New Mexico. You know, man, and everybody's pointing fingers at Alec Baldwin and shit because, you know, Alec Baldwin has created this aura around him where he's always got to say creepy shit and act fucking creepy, so people want to put him under the jail. Listen, Alec Baldwin is a fucking creepy guy and his ego got control of him. And it's fucked up, but now I want, you know, I went to California six months ago. I had to see the dentist, I had to see my heart doctor, and I had to go see the weed people. And while I was, when I finished, and I was waiting to get back on the plane, I called my man Dean Del Rey, and I asked Dean if he wanted to go eat. And Dean came, we went, we got some Mexican food, we got some potato tacos, he brought his cute little dog, and we just bullshitted. We just bullshitted about life and what was going on and how he was feeling. I was still fucked up. I was going through my bullshit. <clears throat> we had a great chat, and we walked outside, and while we were outside, just sitting on Burbank Boulevard in front of the hotel, Dean goes, hey, man, before I leave, can we take a picture? And I go, absolutely, Dean. So we took a fucking picture, and he put it on Instagram. When I got on the plane that night, I was just checking shit, and I checked Instagram, and I saw the picture that he had put up of him and I, and under there was a little comment, and the guy goes, there he is, you know, whatever. He wrote, like, a thing about me. There he is, the man of steel. There goes a man at a time that wasn't scared of anything, but today he's scared of everything. And I looked at that comment, whatever. It is what it is, some guy, and I thought about it. I go, you know what? Maybe he's right in a way. You know, I never had any fear of much and the, watching the news and this fucking whatever was going on got under my fucking skin, plus with my vulnerability, and that's it. I built up this fucking anxiety. Maybe that's what happened. But I thought about it in a deeper sense, you know, like, what the fuck is going on with me? Why don't I want to do this? Why don't I want to do that? Well, yes. I was scared, but I also knew one thing. Last year, I moved here in August, and about October, my phone started ringing. Not a big, you know, not a big shock. It just started ringing with little offers for movies, TV shows. It was more TV shows, okay? And it was like a TV show in North Carolina, that, and they kept pressing the issue. They really want you to read for it. There was a movie in the Dominican Republic that they wanted me to do about Cuba. There was a movie going on in somewhere in Arizona that reached out to me, like a, a TV show. And there was a TV show on ABC that reached out to me in L.A. At the time, my head was like, you know what, man? I, I just got here. I just fucking got here. I don't really want to get on a plane and start traveling all over the fucking country. That's not what I want to do. So that was my mindset. But then I spoke to a dear friend of the joint podcast. I spoke to a dear friend of the church podcast. Great friend of mine, Greg Garcia. We were just chit-chatting, and Greg told me he had a show on Amazon, which I just shot uh, two months ago, maybe. And he was telling me that, you know, these shows... They require $400,000 per episode with COVID. COVID adds an added cost of $400,000 to a TV show per episode, guys. So if you do 10 episodes of your TV show, it's going to cost you $4 million in COVID expenses. You're like, Joey, how can that be? Well, what used to be a van to take me, Mike, my wife, Mercy, you, your wife, your kid, to whatever. Now we can't, eight people can't get in a van. It's got to be one person for van. If you want to be cheap, I was on a job where they put four people in a fucking van. Okay? Again, this is what I'm saying to you. So, I had shot the Sopranos. I saw, I had heard what it cost them for those five days we shot just for COVID, and I was blown away. But let me give you an example. 
They put us in a fucking hotel in Midtown Manhattan that was gorgeous. They rented the whole hotel. You couldn't just rent like eight rooms. They had to rent like the whole hotel. I was basically on a floor by myself. They had a contractor room that had a little bit of like it was outside, but really inside. What do you call that? Like, a, like a, yeah, like a room that could open up so air could go in there. I mean, it was the end of spring. It was the end of fall. It was kind of nice out, so they, you know, that we could all go in there and nobody would get COVID. But there was, like I'm saying to you, it was me, John, maybe Mike Gandolfini, Samson. If I say, I think uh, your boy, uh, you know, Ray Liotta, there was maybe eight of us in the whole hotel. How many fucking rooms in a hotel? Let's say there's six rooms on a floor. If there's 12 rooms, that's 60 fucking floor, 60 rooms. There was eight people in the hotel. The hotel was catering to us eight. They had two New York City cops at the front door. That, that's a detail. You got to pay those motherfuckers. They went and got us anything we wanted to. Like if we said we needed deodorant, they would go to CVS and get us deodorant. They also had to drive each of us individually to different rooms, and then we had to get tested, and then we were put into general population after an hour. And even then, they didn't want you mixing and matching. You had a COVID fucking lady. They was, they're supposed to have three COVID agents on a job site. Again, this is what I heard. The many saints in Newark had like fucking eight or nine of them. So I felt safe. When I did the many saints in Newark, and I saw how they were doing something, how they were doing the whole COVID thing, I felt really safe. So I was like, fuck it. You know, this is great. I had no problems. I, you know, you have to wear a mask the whole time. The only time you don't wear a mask is after you get tested when they're about to shoot your scene. And I mean, you go into the scene with your fucking mask on and some of you lady will yell, take your mask off. And real quick, you got to put it in your pocket. And then you shoot the scene and she'll say, mask back on. And you got to put your mask back on while you're waiting there. So they could adjust, adjust that fucking light over there and that flower that's fucking blocking the camera. So now I got to wait there with my mask on and then take the fucking mask off and then shoot the scene again. It's a fucking nightmare, but it keeps everybody safe. 